Welcome to Heat Wave Arena. So if you don't know, Heat Wave Arena is a roller hockey rink being built here in Columbus, Ohio. It is being built by Andrew, also known as Nasher on YouTube, and Cody. And I am fortunate enough to play with the Columbus Heat, which is the local roller hockey team we have here. And because they're doing this, I offered my IT, computer science, just my technological expertise to do IT work, really whatever they needed here to kind of get this place going. And because of that, um, if you've been following my channel, I've been building what I've been saying is like a Twitch or a local RTMP streaming server. And the goal of that is actually placed here and used here for all the cameras that we are planning to use. And I am here today because I am doing some work on getting some core internet network stuff structured and going. But I also thought it would be a good, uh, good idea and good day to kind of give a documentation or just explanation of what the plan for networking in the core backbone of this place is going to be. And again, just to document this for future me or whoever it takes over has something to reference for why things were done. So let's go over the hardware that we're going to be using. And here's the current uh, networking IT corner of the office. Um, not much to say here. This uh, rack will probably be either wall mounted or put on top of like a filing cabinet. Not sure yet, we'll get there eventually. But for now, this is what we have and this is more or less gonna be the hardware we're gonna have uh, for the rink. So this whole thing was actually based and kind of built around this Microtik um, CRS328 uh, uh, router switch and it's a bit weird because the switch usually just wants you kind of structure your network around, but we're planning here to have a bunch of cameras and other stuff that's going to be used for content creation, streaming, we'll figure it out eventually, but we do plan to have a bunch of cameras and those are going to be powered over PoE. So this switch was actually kind of the core of it because it has 24 ports of PoE and if you should read the documentation, it is actually PoE plus capable. I don't know why it's not more like advertised you kind of have to look at the documentation to see that it supports the 802.1 t spec i want to say i might be saying that wrong but that spec the at is for pue plus so it does support it and honestly there we do have a ubiquity router here but Ubiquity really doesn't offer anything that's even comparable to this Microtik switch. They're just the 24 ports of gigabit with four Q, um, not QS, just uh, SFP plus ports that are 10 gigabit. And then oh, it was like 500 or so watts of total PoE power. Like just there isn't a Ubiquity switch for price and performance and all the feature set that come close to this. So honestly, I really love the switch. I might actually get it for myself for uh, my place, but um, Really nice switch and it should be future proof enough for us. I, I don't see us, maybe, I don't know, we'll see. But I think it should be future proof enough um, for us and kind of that's what started this whole thing. Now, again, I mentioned we have a Ubiquity Dream Machine SE switch. Uh, there was really no point or choice to go with the SE versus the regular other than it has six PoE uh, ports here. Um, no, sorry, eight PoE uh, ports, gigabit and then 2.5 gigabit WAN. Um, yeah, no, no other real reason um, beyond it's just nice to have the PoE on the, the ports because we do have some ubiquity um, access points just to make life easier. And then we don't currently have 2.5 gig uh, internet, but again, we might, again, just kind of planning for future, um, future proofing stuff. So that's why I went to SE, but not much uh, beyond that. Uh, top there you can see the patch panel, nothing in it yet. Um, like I mentioned, we have these uh, Unify 6 uh, light access points that we'll be using. Um, 100 bucks, honestly, they're just, they're good. I mean, we have two of them. One of them really will cover uh, this entire space. It's it's not too big and it's just, just open. So one of those honestly will cover it, but we've got two kind of redundant, um, but I'll be mounting those up hopefully today. We'll see. Um, but 100, again, 100 bucks, it's just, Plays nice with the whole ubiquity thing. They're really good. Uh, makes Wi-Fi, VLANs, and all that uh, nice and easy. Um, again, this is a router, technically. The, the, the Microtik is CRS's cloud router switch, so it is a router. However, this is my first time doing stuff of this scale, this nature. I have done some IT work in the past. I mean, obviously, I have my server rack at my place that I have done with. 
but I've never worked with router OS. I've never done VLANs and all that. I've just done dumb switches. So I know what they are and I, I know what VLANs are and all this stuff, but I feel like going with Ubiquiti is a little more noob friendly UI and just easier of use is going to be a little bit easier for me to do, especially when it comes to a real life commercial install. I feel it's probably better for me to not, to not pick something that's going to be a struggle for me or something that I can't you know, fix quick. Um, so right OS is cool, but I know nothing about it. So I feel like it's a little bit of a big undertaking for me to try and use that and set it up. So again, a lot of reasons, but uh, I, I feel like this is probably the best setup I can get. You know, just the router and switch. It should be again good for us for the future. I don't see us running into any issues down the line. Um, but uh, those are the main hardware. I guess one more thing I should mention is that we have these Dell um, Optiplex little the the little server stuff. Um, Facebook Marketplace is great for these. They're about hundred bucks, um, and this is probably going to be using for any sort of compute uh, server resource or need here. I, I don't know what I'm planning to use for the streaming platform that I've been building, but this will host kind of just any local connection stuff I need. I'm sure we'll have some self-hosted applications I'll be having here. Um, the VPN will be running on this. Just whatever general things I need, this is plenty good. And I've actually set up one here for the POS system. Um, this is the actual square, but or for front desk, it's not the actual POS, but I actually have another one of these for this. They're just, they're great computers. I mean, they're 16 gigabytes of RAM. They're relatively powerful CPUs, but they're pretty efficient. Uh, honestly, for whatever reason you need, they're, they're great computers, unless you're really gonna be hammering them with kind of a hard workload. Any office setting, they are plenty good and they're just, they're solid little computers. So. I have one there again, the general applications will be hosted on that here. I haven't thought about what we're gonna be using for the, the streaming server for all the cameras to come into. Those would work, but they don't have three and, a, uh, three and a half inch drive bays, which is kind of what the main storage is, is gonna be. They only have M.2 and um, two and a quarters. So uh, they could work, but it's just gonna be much more pricey and we'll see when it gets there. But I might have another smaller server that's gonna handle all of the video ingest and be running the backbones, which we've been calling the application of the building. Um, might be running that, but um, that's something we'll figure out in the end. We'll start getting cameras up. Um, and all that. Speaking of cameras though, we do have one. It's a little hard to see if I can, I can zoom up there. You can sort of see we have one camera up there. It's just sort of taped up there and mounted with a nice long ethernet cord uh, going all the way back to here to the front desk. And we tested out yesterday. We had the first um, skate for the Columbus Heat guys. We tested it out so you can see the cord runs back and into the room. But that camera is just this Ada HD NDI Cube. Uh, it's like $400, it's not that bad. And here's the, the preview of it. It's, it's a pretty decent camera. Obviously it's hard to see because it's a recording of a recording on screen. It, it won't look quite right, but the quality's not bad. For $400, that's 1080p 60. Um, I, it's, it's, pretty, it's a pretty good deal. I'm not sold on the quality of it. We will see. I might try some additional uh, different ones from Ada, but uh, it's not bad. Well, uh, again, something we'll think about and we'll kind of tweak, but um, we have one. Plans for a bunch of others, so uh, lots, of, lots of stuff to figure out and think about. But that's for a future problem and down the line, maybe another video, we'll see. But today, I just wanted to give a rundown of all of the equipment we're going to be using and just kind of give a layout of how this is going to be working. And then I'm going to be spending some time here getting that all set up correctly accessed from my laptop and all that. And I'm probably gonna try and mount one of the APs um, up on the wall up here to broadcast out there. But um, yeah, so that's that's about covers what the, the plan for the IT networking um, hardware and all that is here. So yeah, that about does it. So hopefully if you guys are excited, um, maybe I'll do more videos on this. I'm sure as I do more projects, there's a bunch of stuff that we would like to do. And I think that'd be cool and fun to do. So I might make more videos on those projects I'm doing. Um, but yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed. I will catch you guys in the next one. Peace out.